Alrighty. Ooh, we got this going. We're gonna get situated a little bit. Allow folks to come in. What up? Anyone is a Karanga Bin fan? Been super into them lately, so we're gonna allow them to welcome us together before we get started. What's up, folks? Great to see people in here. Hello, hello! What up? What up, KGA Long Beach? Love it. If you all are watching right now, feel free to share this. I think you do that, yep, with that button. Smash that little share button in the corner. Invite folks, come party with us. We're gonna talk about a lot of really cool stuff. I'm really excited. We're gonna talk about People State of the City, of course, our Amplify campaign. We're gonna touch on youth organizing, parent organizing, um, a lot of good stuff. Make this worthwhile because I've not had my hair cut yet. My mom's gonna be really mad that I'm doing this right now with such long hair. <laughs> hello, folks. Hello, hello, hello. I'm gonna let Karanga Ben welcome us a little bit before we get started and jump into it. But go ahead and invite folks. What's up? We're gonna be chopping up a lot of different things happening social change wise in Long Beach um, and a lot of really awesome organizing that's happening both with young people, with parents and LBUSD talking about um, what a lot of organizations are doing around the detention center. Um, we're gonna talk about people's state of the city. So it's gonna be a lot of really good stuff and I'm excited for it. It's gonna be good. What's up, what's up? Oh, hey, Leanne, what's up? Mm -mm -mm. Bonus points for anybody else who listens, listens to Karanga Bin. We're going to get started in like one minute. Oh, what's up? What's up, Jen? I see you. All right. This is dope. Okay. Welcome, folks. It's really awesome to start seeing some people on here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is James. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, I'm the executive director with Long Beach Forward and just around, um, I've taken to the new title of CFO, Chief Feelings Officer. So if you ever got need some time, need me to hold some space for you, hit me up. Hit us up through Instagram or something like that. Hey, what's up? If you are here and want to say hi in the chat, please come through and do that. Um, I want to welcome y'all to our Amplify LB IG live chat. Um, this is actually the first time we're doing an Instagram live on our Long Beach Forward page, um, which is really exciting because um, I think this is a great way for us to communicate and connect. And I think the one thing we've all taken away from this, you know, uh, pandemic global pundle say is that we still need to have connection spaces, be that virtual, be that through these live streams or whatnot, because there's still a lot of important work that we're all feeling, that we're all doing, that we're all holding. And so um, I think that leads into a really great, um, uh, the purpose of why we're doing this today, which is um, today we actually kicked off our Amplify Long Beach campaign, which is super exciting. If you've been following some of the stuff that we've been sharing and working on at Long Beach Forward and with our partners, We've been looking at different ways that we can support community work and, and overall movement building, whether that be with the environment, whether that be economic justice, um, whether that be racial justice in so many different ways, um, because we have a world to win. We've got a lot of things we've got to do, right? And we know that things just because, you know, spaces are opening back up or, you know, we're reaching um, or creeping slowly towards herd immunity, I will believe we will get there. Um, the world's fundamentally changed in so many different ways. And so um, we kicked off this Amplify Long Beach campaign to really help support the work that um, Long Beach Forward and our partners are doing. And so we have an ambitious goal of raising $10,000 to support all this moving work. But part of our culture of community-centric fundraising and doing all of this work is that we lift others up together. And so we reject these ideas, right, about scarcity or around, you know, we can only, it has to be this way, it can't be this way. 
or other ways. And so part of that is doing conversations like this so we can amplify the voices, not just of other community leaders, but other organizations that are doing dope, dope work. And so um, if anybody wants to turn this into a game, count how many times that I say dope throughout this live chat, because I'm sure it's going to be a lot. So um, <laughs> I'm sure that will be a lot of fun. Um, so I am really grateful and I will be continuing to say it to all the folks who decided to join us um, and are going to come and join me on this live chat as well, um, internet permitting and everything else um, as we're doing that. So I'm excited to chop it up. Um, we're going to cover a lot of different issues, talk about our campaign. If you're interested in joining um, and, and helping contribute to our Amplify Long Beach campaign, um, we'll drop the link. I'm sure one of my, my um, co-organizers is going to drop the link somewhere. Magically, it'll just happen. Um, you can visit lbforward.org slash amplify lb and check that out um and we're going to be you know talking a lot of different ways um that long beach forward supports movement building um but also really want to give a platform and space to our amazing organizing partners who are doing real real work to not only just change our community for the better but just to help people imagine how this world can be better and actually doing it that's the hard part right like if organizing was easy everyone would be doing it right but um, we're all out here trying to create doors and spaces for folks to get involved and get plugged in because we have, like I said before, we have a world to win. So I think that's really what we wanted to do tonight. Um, just to chill, chop it up with folks and talk about what those opportunities look like. So with that, I am going to go hit a button and do things, um, because I'm going to send an invite to our first speaker to join us. Hopefully she is going to come on in a little bit and we'll be chopping it up, talking about um, one of my favorite events. Oh, what's up? Look at that. It's magical. Wow. This sounds amazing. <laughs> what's up, Marlon? Hey, hey, hey. I, um, this is my first time doing IG Live and I had to call Diana to teach me how to do it. Yo, like young organizers, I appreciate you out there holding it down for us. <laughs> older millennials. Who feel like I thought I knew some stuff, but no, I'm learning so much too. Shout out to Diana who was also texting me. James, don't forget to do this earlier before. Like that's the real magic. I see you out there. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Enjoying the afternoon. Oh nice. That's good. That's good. Um hey, I just got off the, the BLM event. I forgot to mention it earlier. Um, but it was super dope seeing um folks come together and in, in and I think in that container to talk about you know, a year after George Floyd's murder and kind of where we're at organizing wise. Um, so it was awesome. Um, okay, well, actually, you know what? I don't know, you wanna introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you? Sure, hey folks, Marlene, she, her are my pronouns and I am the Associate Director at Long Beach Forward. And what else do y'all wanna know? I grow plants, that's my magical gift. Um, I love to eat. So if you ever want to eat food, call me up. And I am not as out there about feelings as James. I'm more strategy and getting things done. So if you ever want to get things done and think through challenges, I'm definitely your girl. I love that. But together, right? You got the feelings, you got the strategy. Unstoppable, really, truly. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I know when I wasn't telling you about this, I really wanted you to chop it up with us about the people's state of the city. So can you tell us about that? Where do we start? Uh, this is our 10th year. We're really, really hella excited to put it together. Um, it's been 10 years of folks coming together to just start talking about what's going on in our community. And it's an amazing event, I think. Um, every time folks show up and they just get to hear how like our stories really connect us and that's kind of at the core of the people state of the city really trying to tell their stories and trying to get folks to understand that a lot of the challenges we face in our communities are systematic and more than that trying to get people to get engaged with us um, and get to do the work on the ground and we don't do this by ourselves LB Forward is one of the anchoring organizations we have an array of partners some of them are here on the watching this as we're doing this so shout outs to everyone that puts it together because it's only been possible because everybody hella loves it we thought we were gonna pull that off because of the panini and everybody was like hell no we need to do it because of the panini so i just want to say like 10 years are 
easily said, but it's taken a lot of labor. Um, but yeah, that's what we do. We get together, talk about issues, and then try to find solutions together during the state of the city. Yeah, I feel I feel you, Chris. Ten years. It's wild to think that it's ten years of the people say the city. Um, also, didn't, like, I didn't think we'd get to 10 years. I also didn't think that we would get to a point where um, we'd have to do this virtually and we wouldn't be able to do it like in person, which not gonna lie, it's gonna be hard for me. I think I'm, I'm struggling with that. Yeah, it's gonna be hard not to see our friends or get picketed or cause a commotion or surprise people with our skates. So it's definitely gonna be different, but we're still looking excited, um, looking forward to having it done. Okay, so then that reminds me, what is like one of your favorite People Say the City moments from the past decade, really? I'm going to give a shout out to my sister Ernesti, Ernesto Rocha, for putting together one of the dopest skits I have seen to this day, which is, was he brought a march to the actual um, congr first congregation, and we had a march, and people's participants and people sitting in the audience were in shock. They really thought that people were protesting us, but literally we put together a skit where people were protesting and really trying to portray to the community how it felt to be part of the audience and also feel seen as to what most likely brought them to the state of the city. So I just want to give it to my sister that that was one of the most impactful, um, awe-causing kind of a, um, skit. And that's still one of the ones that I hold dearest to my heart because we also had a lot of really dope activists as part of the skit, um, Maribel, Nicole, like it was basically all of our homies going to going with the flow of our crazy idea. So shout outs to my sister, Ernesto. Love that. Someone had Ernesto in the chat. Um, I just saw Chris's comment too, the, like the Eric and Kiosk videos, like forever a staple. Oh man, that one, the year, oh, was it? I can't remember which year it was, but the one where we opened with the mayor's state of the city, and it was then the sh um, um, the police the police shooting. Um, oh man, I remember that pissed so many people off. But like, it was worth like this. It's the people's state of the city, right? Like that's the that's the whole point. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Absolutely, it's about telling the stories that hurt our community. Um, but it's also about resilience because in the past, like the poetry, the art pieces are always it hurts because it talks about stuff that makes our lives harder, but also like it really brings up how amazing our communities really are. I love that. I love that. What What are you looking forward to about like this year's virtual of it? I'm really looking forward to the challenge of trying to convey that sense of community virtually. Um, and also I'm just looking forward to how it evolves and how people engage virtually as well. I'm pretty impressed with a lot of community members who are monolingual just being like, okay, this is where we're at. We're going to join Zoom. We're going to join um, Facebook Live. We're going to join IG Live. Like, just people's resiliency to being willing to adjust to the panini and, like, seeing that reflected in the state of the city. Okay, I also have to say that every time you say panini, I think of the little not sex song. So that's just, like, running through my head. <laughs> same pandemic is still very hurtful so panini highlights that we're moving forward from that horrible situation so what are, what are the details like if people are just in the city where do they go what's the deal what do they got to put on the calendar yeah i go on our facebook page and we are gonna be having it may june 21st at 6 p.m i know i forgot the date the information right off the top of my head but june 21st it's gonna be a monday at 6 p.m and we're gonna get started um and you could follow us on our facebook we're gonna be going live on there um and you could find the event invite on there too so just um put people state of the city 2021 and you should be able to find the event that's dope what and what is there anything else that people can do to like get involved or if they want to like help out in any way? Um, they're welcome to reach out to our, our or and they could reach out to me directly at Marlene at lbforward.org. And I just used my white name. Can you tell Marlene? But you know, it just conveys how to spell it M A R L E N E at lbforward.org. I love that. I love that. So Marlene at lbforward.org 
Thank you for the dope count on the update. Um, if you're just joining in, um, I realized recently my, my dopeness is rubbing off on other people. So I'm checking emails or things where other people are saying dope. And so um, I, it's, it's, it's infectious. But yes, this people say in the city, absolutely dope. I stand by that 100%. <laughs> what, what do you think, Marlene, if there's like anybody who hasn't been in the people say in the city before, like what should they expect to, when they tune in to at least our first goal one? They should expect to fall in love with us. Honestly, I've never seen anybody go to the state of the city and walk away being like, man, I hate those people. They made me lose my time. Hell no. People walk in there and they're just like, oh my God, I love this energy. I love the people. Like, we usually have the opposite effect. People don't want to leave the space and we're like, come on, folks, we need to leave because the people need to clean up. But that's the type of things you should expect to hear about dope work that's being done things that really come close to our community and just loving the space. Like um, just going back to Diana, who was a person that got me on this IG live, like Diana came to our state of the city and all of a sudden, like she was really invested in doing this work. And now we have an amazing Diana. So like, you never know how going to the state of the city is going to impact your life. For real, for real, because I think about, there's a lot of people that I've come across who they like, oh, I like learned about this organization or I got involved with this, um, you know, this campaign or this effort because of the people's news. So that's really dope. Um, and I'm also thinking like, I don't know that the, you know, the police officers who come have enjoyed it as much as other people, but it's fine. We don't, we don't have to worry about that. <laughs> well, thanks, Marlene. I really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want to share just about people's state of the city or about I'll Amplify Long Beach, any of that? No, other than people say that the city is put together by LB Rising, an amazing coalition that puts in a lot of work. So um, just wanted to let y'all know that it's not just done by us, but also to remind folks that we also put together a series of leadership trainings. So if you're ever interested in becoming more civically engaged, really understanding how to advocate for your communities, like we're definitely some of those people. We put together something called People's State of, I mean, Long Beach Rising, and we also put together boards and commission training. So if you're ever interested in becoming more civically engaged, let us know. We know people that know people that do training. <laughs> That's very, very, in the most inclusive way. <laughs> I love that. Thanks, Marlene. It was great chatting with you. But yeah. How do you leave this thing now? Kick me off. Oh, you, got, you got called Diana for that. So, oh, I think actually I can't kick you out. I think. Um, actually, you know what? We tried this last time, um, but you should be able to exit. <laughs> just going to close the, the tab and then come back. It's okay. Don't worry. There you go. That works. All right. I love that. So we're going to continue on with our conversations. Um, that was Marlene chatting it up about the people state of the city. I am inviting in, um, our next um, partner um, is gonna, <laughs> I, you know, I can't kick her out. I just didn't know how to kick her out. So my, I'm bad, Di I'm sorry, Diana, I'm letting you down. <laughs> What's up, Gabby? Hey, hey, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm doing good, it's been a long day, but I'm glad that we're here. I know, Did I feel like I saw you on three Zooms, but I actually think it was only one. I don't know, I'm losing all sense of time. Yeah, that was like the BLM uh, <laughs> virtual gathering. Yeah, that's right. Was there. We're just so we're coming from the same place. I feel yeah. like that always happens. We see each other almost every Zoom or email. I see your name constantly. I know, same, same. But it's a, it's a, it's a good, I don't, honestly, I don't mind. I'm not mad about it, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, hey, good. I really, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit to the audience and tell folks yes. about it? Yes, yes. So, hey, folks. Um, first time I'm doing this kind of IG live, so super excited. My name is Gabby Hernandez, pronoun she, her, ella. I'm the executive director for the Long Beach Immigrant Rights Coalition. If you don't know about LBIRC, we're like the dopest immigrant rights organization you can think of. Um, our handle is at LBIRC562. And so we work with immigrant communities in Long Beach, specifically the undocumented communities, specifically the folks that speak Spanish, monolingual Spanish speakers. So our, our goal is to fight deportations, close detention centers, end up, you know, end the um, criminalization of immigrant communities, um, and at the same time, empower community 
community members and build, uh, you know, leadership and power with our impacted folks that we work with. That's dope. That's dope. And I like highlighting that, like, y'all are doing really important work, too. And I appreciate that you lifted that up. Um, there's a lot there's a lot of of work to be done i think in the city um and so one of the you know of the many things that you all are doing i think one of the reasons why i was really interested in having you come on and, and us being able to help amplify the work that's happening is because of what's been in the news around the detention center um for um migrant children and so i'd love for you to just share a little bit about what's been going on with that but specifically also like this dope campaign that's come up around protection not de not detention um so yeah yeah, no, thank you. Um, yeah, so LBRC launched the uh, Protection Not Detention campaign in early April when we found out that the convention center was going to be used as a emergency intake facility, um, you know, that was going to be housing up to a thousand children um, at the convention center. So immediately, as soon as we found out, we gathered a group of folks, including LBF, you know, Baji, BLM, Clue, FMC, KGA, like you name it. There's about like 16 different organizations that join forces with us um, in advocating um, and just getting, trying to get transparency about what happened, what is going on, right? So we know doing at the anti-deportation work, um, trying to close detention centers, we know that this is something that has happened in the past. Uh, we know that the government has failed at taking care of uh, immigrant communities. And when we talk about welcoming families, we need to really welcome everyone in. And we're talking about at the border um, ending, um, you know, the policies that are separating families, you know, to begin with. So at the border, we, uh, you know, because of the Trump policy, we have uh, Title 42 that pretty much expels adults from, from entering the U.S. And so it allows ch children to come in, right? And there's also a number of different children mm -hmm. that are coming here to reunite with their family. So they have family members here. And so instead of the government figuring out what is the best streamlined way of getting these kids to their families as soon as possible, they decided to create large-scale facilities where they house these children uh, while they're waiting either to go with their sponsor or their family member. And so when we talk about, you know, um, this kind of facilities, before kids would stay at CBP, which is uh, Customs and Border Patrol, and those facilities are a nightmare. Those facilities are awful. And, and so there's no right. doubt about that. But also we already know by research and by doing this work uh, for many, many years that housing children in big scale, big scale facilities is not good for their mental health. So there is no doubt that this facility may be, and I wanna say maybe because I'm not 100% sure we're not in that facility, is better than CBP custody, right? Being in the CBP facility, but it's also not the solution, right? We need to push the federal government to do better, right? And to figure out a way of actually welcoming families uh, in a way that is humane, right? In a way that is putting human life as a priority and not profit, right? Uh, we know that this big facility, any facility that is detaining anyone that is restricting their freedom, is making money off of this 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 uh, this business as a business, right? So for us, what we're right. trying to do here, what we why we started the protection at detention campaign was to push our local elected officials to see that bigger picture and to understand that what we're asking for are just like essential critical questions that they should have thought about before they accepted this facility, right? Because we know that Long Beach is. Um, you know, a city that can 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 have, you know, the right hearts to welcome, you know, families. But actually that energy needs to be pushed in the direction yeah. of like how do we push the federal government to do better, right? And to have like small small scale facilities to be able to house children in a way that is not going to re traumatize them, right? And that is again putting their well being, you know, as a as top priority. And so for us when we launched this campaign was one to ensure the elected officials here knew that we were seeking transparency in what was going on at the facility. And so we're asking for a community oversight committee to be uh, form and we already have you know really really amazing people that can form that committee but we want to make sure that, that we can monitor the facility and ensure that the things that they're saying are going great are actually going great right um, and that this body of oversight can ensure that the children are well taken care of and that the reunification process is happening in the way that is intended to and the children are getting the necessary things that they need in order to not be re-traumatized again, right? So that's one component of it. But the bigger picture, the bigger component is to push the federal government, you know, um, to again, if it, HHS is gonna be housing and, and managing these facilities, we need them to do better and to start looking at other ways of caring for children. And I'm not talking about alternatives to detention. I'm saying no detention at all. And I'm saying, let's figure out how mm -hmm. we can house 
migrant children and families and welcome them with open hearts, but also give them the resources to thrive, right? It's not simply coming in and, and that's it. It's how do we provide the legal representation so they don't fall through the cracks, so they don't end up being deported and also connected to social services that they're gonna be able to access in order to have a chance in, 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 in the United States, right? Because this problem is not only happening in Long Beach, this is happening all over the country. So I think it's important for people to realize that, that, you know, as far as, you know, as, as much as we're fighting for oversight, this Long Beach facility, that doesn't mean that this make, that, that makes this facility okay. We're asking for oversight just to ensure that the children are taken care of, but oversight doesn't make this facility okay. You know, oversight doesn't make this facility a model. We need to be pushing for more. And so the protection and detention campaign is focusing on that, right? So it's focusing on all of those mm -hmm. aspects, but also ensuring that the closure of this facilities actually happens by the time it's needed to happen so that the federal government can actually have those better ways of caring for families and children. So I tend to talk a lot, so I'm gonna stop there, see if you have you know, any questions or any, any, any questions in the chat box. Um, you know, as you can tell, this is work that we're passionate about and it's not because we simply care just because this is like humans' mm -hmm. lives. These are these are our lives. These are our, you know our stories as well, um, and that's for everyone that right. works with an LBRS team and everyone that forms the team. So I think that's that's another uh, point for us to to focus on, right? Yeah. Well, I, oh, I no, appreciate it because I think. Oh no. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is that better? Yes. 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 A little back. better. Yeah. You're back. Okay. Well, I appreciate that you like took the time to like really dive into it because I think it speaks to the fact that this is really complex, right? And I think, you know, I've heard from a lot of folks too, and I know you have as well around like, well, you know, they, we want to help in any way we can, but I think it's it's difficult to acknowledge and I think you did it really well about the fact that like, you know, this is, we're trying to make a, a, a better situation out of this, but we, this shouldn't be the situation we're in in the first place, right? And I think that is i think what i really appreciate about all of this is the lens that you're bringing to it and i think what the campaign is lifting up about like what if we didn't cage people in the first place what if we cage children in the first place right and and separate them from families um so i'm really curious like how like what how can folks like show up and support right now either getting involved or in any other way yeah no so we've been having a lot of different actions since since early April. So we had like a week of action, we have Twitter storms, we have, you know, rallies. So there's different things that are happening and things that are coming up. So one of the things that um, it's not fully out there yet, but we're thinking about um, having the forums to hear from community folks, also having, you know, a conversation about that political education that needs to happen to understand the root causes as to why folks leave their home countries, why we leave and why we come here, and then the realities that we face here, right? So I'm going to drop in the chat a link where you can just go in there, you know, learn more about the different steps that, you know, that we're taking, learn more about the campaign and also get plugged in. So you can put in your email address, your phone number, and then we'll be, you know, once we have an action coming up, we'll be sending, a, you know, a blast um, email to you all so you all can engage in that. And things are happening really fast. So if, even if I don't have a scheduled event today for next week, it'll happen um, or, or the following week. So I'm going to put that on here. So folks can just learn. Oh no, let's see. Okay, let me figure it out. I do live. But I'll... Trying, trying to dream, yes, right? <laughs> but, right. I'm like, oh, this is all new to me. But I'm gonna put our our, our link, um, our website in there. When you go in there, you're gonna be able to see a big tab that says protection at detention, and then click on that, and it's gonna guide you through all of the different steps. You're, one, you're gonna be able to see who's involved in this campaign, which is which is a lot of the folks that you may be familiar with, but also you get to find out what is the campaign about? What are we asking for? And then again, you can put your email address and then we'll be sending you info um, once we have an action coming up. But there's ways that you can get engaged even from your own home. You don't even have to go anywhere. You can make phone calls, right? Um, you can use your Twitter account, use your Instagram account. So as things come up, you know, you can get plugged in in that way. That's dope. What if I like, what if I have money that I want to like donate? Where, where, where can I go there for that? Yeah, so if you have money to continue our efforts, and I think it's important to be real about this, right? So LBIRC uh, started working on this because, again, this is something that, that we're definitely passionate about because it's our stories, it's our, it's our families that are at risk. But also, this is something that happened on top of our, our work already. You know, we had already a really um, heavy workload um, planned out for us for this year. As you know, immigrants 
even with the new administration, we're always having to deal with something on a daily basis. And so this work came on top of our already existing work. So if you want to support our work and, um, and, and donate to LBARC to continue our efforts, um, you can go to the same website and there's a big donate button that you can click and then you can donate um, any amount that you want. Really, um, I mean any amount. It can be five bucks, it can be 10 bucks. I mean, if you have a hundred, that's welcome too. And you could also become a member so you can continue our efforts, you know, on an ongoing basis. So you can, it's not about, you know, you can be a $5 monthly member. It, the amount doesn't matter. Um, you know, you can do that. And it's up to you, you know, however you want to help and, and support the work of, of immigrant folks, um, you know, fighting for, for justice. So there's a big donate button. Um, it's a red button at the very top of our website. You can click on there. Um, yeah. And then that's how you're going to be able to donate. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Yo, I want to, I just like really want to appreciate, and I, I'm seeing a lot of love come through in the chat too, for um, just for all the work that y'all are doing. And I think, you know, and, and within the campaign, but also just highlighting the complexities of this issue. Um, and this is going, right? Like we're seeing there was this, there's this end date of August, right? But even then there's so much happening and so much moving so quickly. And I, I, I think that really highlights it. And I appreciate that you did that really well. The need for the oversight, the need for the accountability. And I, we were, I know you and I have been going back on Twitter back and forth too. And like, I'm seeing reporters talk about like, yeah, even we can't hang in there, but Fox News can get into right. the center for some reason. So right. there's a lot of whack priorities and there's a lot of things that um, are a lot of cause for concern. And so um, wishing you the best on the campaign. And I want to remind folks, lbrc.org, um, check it out either to get involved with the campaign or also to smash that donate too. Yes, yes. No, thank you for having me. And I think, as we know, this is not going to be the end, right? Like migration patterns are a thing that we know and we are aware of. So this will happen again. And we need to ensure that big facilities like that are not housing anyone, no children, no one, right? Because we know right. that it's not good for them. So thank you for having me. I want to wrap up with Fuego saying bye here. So, hi, Fuego. Oh, we got hi. a VIP. Hi, Fuego. Hi. Oh, he's looking like, what the hell is this? Hi. It's been a minute since I've seen you, but oh, he's so big now. I know. And it's his birthday. It's his birthday uh, on Thursday. So he's going to be turning two. Oh, right, my. Fuego? Ah, two. Yo, I remember, I think when you first got him, we were like at the border. Do you remember that? It was the border. Yes. Trip. No, no, no. Actually, the first time when I got him, we had a meeting at Long Beach Forward and I couldn't like leave him at home because he was being potty trained. And I brought him into the office. So I think it was one of our big meetings. And he was just like walking around everywhere. Um, yeah, Love he that. loved it. He loves the attention. Love that. More dog rides. That's what we need in the movement. <laughs> yes. Movement Yo, dogs. Love it. Yes. Thanks, Gabby. I really appreciate you coming on. Yes. Bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. OK, let's see. I am going to. Thanks so much. That was that was awesome. I'm gonna see Fuego. I'm so happy. So I thank you all for for tuning in. We're at a halfway point for our Amplify Long Beach chat. I am gonna go. I know. Send all the dog memes. Um, I'm gonna invite in our next speaker. But um, if you're enjoying these conversations before, let us know. Send us some feedback because we'd love to do more stuff like this. And that's part of what our Amplify Long Beach campaign is all about: is lifting up these community voices what's up and so we'll drop that link to if you want to learn more about our amplify campaign and help us meet our goals so but before further ado what's up Sam? how are you i am so like happy to be here thank you for having kga um on this live and it's your first live so like oh my gosh it's an honor how are you <laughs> <laughs> i'm good i'm good look we got like matching long hairstyles right now <laughs> this is like yeah this is like the panoramic like hairstyle now i think like a lot of people are growing up their hair shoot yeah i feel that i feel that i i'm doing well i am ending this day um doing this so it's it's nice to it's fun to chop it up with folks but um why don't you like tell folks about yourself a little bit and anything you want to share yeah so um well, I'm just gonna get into it. Yeah, so my name is Sam, is short for Samnan. Um, I go by all pronouns. And, um, oh, sorry, maybe if you hear Echo, but uh, that's probably better. Now yeah, you're so, um, yeah, I'm like um, a prime example of what it looks like to invest in youth and community and queer folks. And so, you know, just knowing about me, um, how I came into Long Beach, I mean, to Come My Girls in Action, um, 
yeah, I came into the program in 2010. Um, I was part of the pilot program. And yeah, I was like 13 years old when I joined. Um, it was just so great to be with them mm -hmm. and to heal and to grow. And like, um, so now I'm here, um, the project coordinator um, for the Young Men's Empowerment Program, the program that I started in, and I'm here as staff. And I'm here with you on live talking about our work. So yeah. It's dope. It's just, it feels, I truly am inspired by folks like you, Sam, and, and so many others, like, been a big fan of, of what Kamai Girls in Action has been doing for a long time. Um, and just like, you know, it's easy to get like, really like, down and out about some of this work and the injustices in the world. But like, you know, hearing from like, you and about your story and your own journey into that and all of this work, I think is always really just, it really inspires me. And I know, um, you know, the chance to uplift a lot of that too um, is really important. So I'm glad we're able to do that. Um, and thanks for coming on the live. I know that can be nerve wracking sometimes. Yeah, nervous. Um, what's so funny, I have my fan in my back <laughs> that's hovering over my head. I look like an alien. <laughs> you good, you good. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about like the Invest in Youth campaign and any other organizing projects y'all are working on right now? Yeah, um, also just to start like with introducing like what My Girls in Action is. Um, yeah, so um, we're a community-based organization, um, you know, whose mission is to build like progressive and sustainable Long Beach community um, that works for gender, racial, and economic justice um, led by South um, East Asian young women. Um, and going into that, the work of, you know, invest in youth. And yeah, so um, our work in general is like for over 24 years, we've been investing in leadership in Southeast Asian young women and youth. So our leaders come from um, refugee families who are resilient. They come from families who are survivors of war. And, um, you know, we all come from the line of intergenerational poverty, mm -hmm. trauma, um, and part of our heritage. And this all like includes like our community, to, our community too, you know, like we all relate. So like um, our, her um, our heritage is empowering youth. It's giving them the tools to thrive with themselves and community. Uh, we're change makers, we um, are building power, we are healing together and working in multi-generational solidarity with organizations. And that's with, um, you know, the, you know, like the whole vibe of um, invest in youth. Yeah, um, and getting into invest in youth, um, yeah, so um, in 2020, we passed a ballot measure to create funding um, and infrastructure, um, a revenue source to say um, for uh, youth resources and also environmental justice. Um, I think a lot of um, LB folks know about that. Um, well, probably a lot of folks here voted on that. Um, I sure voted yes to pass it. Um, yeah, vote on us. Um, so yeah, um, so, you know, right now, um, so many, um, so how it got here, like so many amazing um, Long Beach orgs, um, you know, helped push this, um, work together, you know, surveyed. Um, we did petitions and things like that. Um, and right now we're making sure that the city is implementing to invest um, in the um, invest in youth measure. So, um, you know, now it's passed. Now we're just making sure that every step of the way youth are incorporated in this process. Um, so we are having, you know, our youth, str um, youth str um, strategic meetings um, um, and planning and, um, yeah, so I just really want to shout out the youth, especially um, in these um, work groups that um, are really planning it together and um, really demanding, you know, what we need um, and demanding the funding that we all need. And this is like a great like basis to what our um, the future of our community could look like. And so, um, yeah, so so we want the youth fund, um, the youth strategy, and, um, and a youth office. So um, we want to make sure that um, they're there from the beginning, not to the end, to the future. So I'm um, also acknowledging, um, you know that youth punishment is invested more than, um, you know, the development of youth. So we want to, you know, flip that around. I love that. That's, I, I'm going to steal one of the, the borrow one of the lines you had that investing youth is a vibe. I love that. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Just let me copyright that. <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. Yeah, that way, you, that way you get all the royalties. That's, that's how it works, yeah. <laughs> That's so dope. Thanks for uh, highlighting and just like painting the picture for folks too. I really, I also want to like uplift and amplify too um, how you talked about young people being part of that process, right? Like that is so key and critical. Like even so you win a ballot measure, right? And now it's about implementing this stuff, how we actually get this to, you know, actually create resources and opportunities for young people. Young people should be part of that every step of the way. 
So I really appreciate that you lifted that up. Um, um, can do you do? You, are you able to share a little bit about the Give and May campaign too? I would love to hear about that. Yeah. Um, so um, this month in Give and May um, to uplift API um, API um, stories and API work. Um, also shouting out like KG as um, we. Um, you know, um, we provide spaces for young Southeast Asian um, women, youth, um, queer folks, like um, all across. Um, and so uplifting like our work. Um, and so right now um, we're asking folks to, you know, help um, donate, um, help out um, and supporting us by, um, yeah, donating in our given made uh, fundraiser. And um, somebody might put it in the link already, but um, put it in the, the chat because, you know, some of the KJ fo folks are here. But yeah, so it's um, bit.ly um, forward slash uh, get, um, all lowercase given may. Um, and then all uppercase KGA. So again, bit.ly um, forward slash all lowercase given May um, uppercase KGA. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, you have a whole squad in the chat. So I'm sure somebody can drop the link in there. <laughs> I love it. Y'all go deep. Y'all go deep. So it's always good stuff. Well, I really appreciate you breaking that down for us, Sam. Is there anything else you want to share or just lift, uh, lift up right now? Yeah, also, um, shouting out the youth, um, you know, during this pandemic, as we're talking about, oh, I said pandemic, um, you know, the panorama. So during this, um, um, a lot of the youth were really supporting their families during these times. And um, again, like, as we're talking about investing in youth, the youth are, um, you know, basically the folks who are supporting their families. So I wanted to uplift their work in, um, you know, giving them the resources and, and educating their family on COVID. Because um, we know like a lot of our older folks, um, they don't have a lot of access to information also like legitimate information. So um, they've been providing that, they've been um, um, supporting their family with PPE. Um, they were also able to, um, you know, through KJ um, and also stepping up in their family to provide, you know, like rent or like financial support with food and things like that. So um, shout out to the youth with that. Um, also, um, um, so, um, this spring and summer, um, just another thing, um, we're also calling voters, um, so we'll hit everybody up. So um, um, just everybody be prepared. Um, you're going you're gonna to get a call from KGA. And um, yeah, so we're just calling voters and residents, letting the, mayors know, uh, the mayor know to pass the um, youth fund that we're talking about for Invest in Youth, um, to take the recommendations that the youth have prepared and worked really hard on. And again, um, having the youth um, throughout the whole process, so making sure that um, you know, the mayor hears us and um, takes our recommendations, the youth recommendations specifically. Um, 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 this for an uh, equitable way for um, especially COVID recovery. So all this funds will go into uh, equitable um, COVID recovery. Um, so um, in order to support us on that, um, also go on uh, kgalb.org. Um, you'll see the letter to sign on there for the mayor. Um, also, if you want to be a monthly sustainer, you know, like $1, $5 a month, you know, um, will help a lot. Um, and also we'll keep you in loop too um, for the folks out there who are listening. So yeah, um, you, you could go on kjlb.org and all those um, links will be there. Love it, I love it, that's dope. You're, you're doing a great job, you're a great co-host. Um, <laughs> co you need you to do more of it. Ah, you need to get out there and do that, I love it. Thanks so much, Sam, I really appreciate it. Thank you for um, having KGA, we really appreciate it too. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'll see you later. And hey, thank you. All right. I am going to, ooh, that was a lot. It also was reminding me there's a lot of really cool stuff coming up with the people's budget. If you're not familiar, the budget cycle happens in the summer. So it feels like we just did this because there was the whole summer and everything that was going on there. Um, but there's going to be a lot going on. So just want to shout that out and lift that up. Um, and we're going to bring in our last guest to talk about um, talk about youth organizing. Now we're going to talk about parent organizing. Um, but just also want to lift up our, you know, and thanks for those of you who are tuning in and joining us um, on our Amplify Long Beach chat. Um, we'll share the link around to you. This is, you know, all about us lifting up community voices and all the opportunities for our, our partner organizations as well, because we can't as Long Beach Forward succeed unless our partners succeed as well. And so... Um, I just really wanted to put that out there again, and I'll come back to it at the end. But what's up, Melissa? Hey, hey, hey! Can you hear hey. me? 
I can hear you. Can you hear me? Cool. Yeah, this is my first IG live too. It's awesome. Hey, me too. So I was uh, Diana was coaching me on how to kick somebody out earlier. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Um, hey, I'm in my I'm in one of my favorite workplaces as a mom. I'm here to talk about parent organizing, and the car is definitely where it all goes down. <laughs> okay, yo, that is a good that's a good segue. So let's, let's talk about that parent organizing. That's why you're here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? But then, um, yeah, feel free to jump into the parent organizing stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm Melissa Morgan. I'm the communications director with Long Beach Forward. My pronouns are she and her. Or one of my favorites is sis. I love that. I learned that from Black Lives Matter. Um, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of two awesome black girls who go to school here in Long Beach. Um, and I, uh, they, you know, this is like our home. This is where they're they're growing up and where they're learning. And um, it's been really cool. I've been with Long Beach Ford for about a year now, learning about organizing. You know, I kind of grew up around the mentality of service and giving back to the community. And I have been blown away, mind blown this last year, um, particularly since the panoramic began. I love that. Um, since George Floyd's murder, since the people's budget um, and joining Long Beach Forward and just really learning from grassroots organizers, just power, power in people power. I love that. I, and I think, thank you for sharing that and that context too. Um, and I think, you know, this this is a good way to kind of tie what we were like talking about earlier. And I think what Sam was sharing about like getting young people involved because, you know, the education is holistic, right? So we also, you know, being able to think about how we bring in parents to that as well is super important. And so I, I really appreciate what you were lifting up because I mean, especially for parents in this past year in this Panini and this Pandulce and this Panorama, holy crap. I don't think I was about to say a bad word, but I don't think I should do that on a live. <laughs> But, like, I would love to hear about, like, some of the parent organizing that's been going on with, like, the parent committee and I think, you know, both within LBUSD and what's been going on at the school board meetings. So anything that you can share to give us some context and insight. Yeah. Well, it's really cool that we're doing this right now, having this conversation during our Amplify LB week, because parent organizing is really about amplifying the voices of parents and pulling them in to realize that they have power. There's this question mm -hmm. we're asking parents in Long Beach. My colleague Nubia, who's been doing the parent organizing here for the last year at Long Beach Ford, is asking parents, what does parent power look like to you in Long Beach? Mm -hmm. What is that? Do you know you have power? Have you felt it? When have you felt it? Um, oftentimes parents haven't felt that. And so there are some really great opportunities for parents to join our parent committee. Uh, we're going to have our first meeting on June 3rd at 6 p.m. And you can find information on our, any of our social media platforms or our website. Um, probably the best way to remember it is go to www.lb4.org. You can then type slash Facebook or slash Instagram or slash Twitter, and you'll go to any of those social media accounts and see our posts. So again, that's June 3rd at 6 p.m. So we're looking to pull together parents from across Long Beach who have uh, students in schools here and wanting to find out what are your concerns, what are your needs, where do you want to feel some parent power? What does that look like for you in Long Beach? Some of the ways that um, I've been engaged and I've seen other parents engage with us and other organizations that we participate in coalitions with um, is speaking, just sharing your voice, amplifying your voice, mm -hmm. your experiences around issues of equity, issues around um, schools reopening, issues around if you have students with disabilities, issues around how your children are being treated um, in school by administrators or by educators, and voicing that at school board meetings. So um, school board meetings are held at least once a month, and we've been airing them, broadcasting them live on Facebook. Uh, yeah. Currently, the school district shows them on YouTube, and so we've been taking the time to also broadcast them on Facebook because we know a lot of parents hang out, not just in their cars, but also on Facebook. And so you can find the school board meetings there. And once you start watching and listening in, you're going you're gonna to have some ideas, some thoughts, some opinions, but also you'll be able to see and listen to other parents who are sharing their experience and their child's experience through the public comment process. That's dope. That's awesome. And I think like, I'm, 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 I was reacting to when you talked about you're going to have opinions, right? Because I think, I mean, I think there's so much like, although I am not a parent, like there's so much 
that I admire about all of what like you and Nubia and so many of the other parent leaders um, <clears throat> who have been holding about just like, this stuff is hard. I mean, I think, you know, just seeing this injustice and this inequity firsthand and experiencing it, it's, it's really difficult stuff, but I am uplifted by, you know, the parent committee and these spaces that we're creating. I mean, we've done it. I think about those early town halls that happened over Zoom um, and community conversations, right? Just to create space for people to connect and, and process all this stuff together. So that was really awesome um, and just so empowering too. So I'm just, that's, I'm ruminating on that because that was really sticking with me. Yeah, and you know, what kind of struck me too is, so um, our colleague Nubia would have been here tonight, but she's with some parents right now, meeting with a school board member. They're learning, uh, these parents are learning about, um, there's some things coming up around budgeting. Like, did you know, did you know that there's money that's allocated to the school district to go to some of our students, but it doesn't necessarily go to the students with most need if parents aren't holding them accountable. So we've got the LCAP, there's a lot of conversation online you can find on our social media about the local control and accountability plan where locally parents and community are supposed to have some control and be able to hold this local school district, the board members that we elect accountable for um, decision making and really representing uh, um, us as the, the people and yep. being able to support our students with the most needs. Um, there's also, you mentioned the equity leadership team, so if folks have parents or community members, if you're an alumni of the school district, if you're a student, like student power is so critical, um, ask about and pay attention to issues around equity because we've been um, sitting on a committee to develop an equity policy, um, spending a lot of time looking at words of policies and working with parents and educators, administrators around the district, trying to determine how to create a policy that mm -hmm. would really have some teeth to it, not just gums, but some real teeth, so that if students are not treated equitably, then there would be some repercussion, then there would be some redirection, then the students who aren't being served would actually be given a chance. That's dope. Yo, I have to say, for you being doing this from your car, you have excellent Wi-Fi connection, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. That's pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> My well, balloon. I see it. Yeah, I know. That was that was a lot. I think you put it really well um, and just summarized that really nicely. What are, like, just can you recap any other ways that folks can, like, get connected or get involved and plugged in with this? Yeah, I'd say, you know, really one of the best places is to visit um, our social media. You can go to facebook.org slash um, uh, uh -oh, move LB forward. Um, we've scheduled all the school board meetings are there and our Facebook events. You'll see posts and information on the phone number of how to call in or if you can show up to the school board meeting and give your public comment. I also want to say, you know, I think it's important to think about what does parent power look like to you as, an, as a parent or even educators, again, students, alumni. Um, have a sense of curiosity, I think, about what's going on in the schools right now because chances are when it comes to issues of equity and inclusion, and what I've learned is the intersectionality of like all the garbage that goes on around how students with disabilities are mistreated um, because of prejudice and systemic prejudice and all the isms you can think of. And if that intersects with race and socioeconomic class and maybe sexual orientation, a lot of these students, they're, they're not being treated as well as they should be. They're not given the chance for the best education they deserve. So I'd say for any of those folks, if you consider yourself a key stakeholder, Start watching these school board meetings. Start asking questions of your school board member for your area that you live in. Um, start finding ways to talk to other people in your life, the young people, the parents, et cetera, um, to, to see what are their experiences and encourage them to speak up and really amplify their voice. Because by amplifying our voices, we're able to amplify real community change and eventually amplify really the best kind of healthy life and experience that we wanna have here in this community in Long Beach. I'm done. That was great. <laughs> like, wow. Thank you for wrapping that up. Just like, whew, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna process that. I'm going to sit with that. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you sharing all of that. Um, and, you know, I want to encourage folks who are watching, if you are a parent, if you know people who are parents, like, get connected, get involved, just as Mel was saying, like, it's disorganizing, right? Getting connected and and, you know, taking action and moving, you know, even though we might be scared, even though we might be feeling really stressed, like this is how we change it is working together. So really appreciate you lifting that up. Um, 
Is there anything else you want to share or just last, last stuff? Um, yeah, in, in June, you're going to see a lot of um, social media posts we're going to be working on around a language justice campaign. Uh, the way that parents have been treated who speak languages other than English by the school district, the way they've been excluded and not included is pretty um, heartbreaking. And mm. so, I mean, I can only imagine for me just how hard it's been as a parent with kids uh, during the panoramic. Um, I can only imagine what it's, what it's like for parents who are not getting direct um, quality communication from the school district because they speak another language and are here trying to make a better life for their kids. So we're all connected. Um, and keep, keep your eyes open and please share, share our content um, so that we can really motivate and encourage others to get engaged and involved. I love that. I love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing and, and helping us get a better sense of all of the parent work that's happening, parent organizing, um, and just highlighting all the stuff with LBUSD too. That's awesome. I appreciate you so much. Thanks, James. Yay. I'm feeling amped up for Amplify LB Week. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, get home safe. <laughs> All right, going to feed my kids. Good night. Okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. Oh, my gosh. That, whew. Okay, so we just talked through a lot. We went through um, a lot of different topics. We talked on uh, People Save the City. We talked about the Protection Not Detention campaign and all of that that's going on with uh, the detention center and pushing for oversight and accountability. Um, and also talking about like, let's not be in this situation in the first place where we're separating kids from their families. Um, we talked about um, the Invest in Youth campaign and the opportunity to give in May. So if you, um, you know, I also, also to mention the Long Beach Immigrant Rights Coalition, you can follow them on here on Instagram or social media at LBIRC562. Um, definitely want to encourage folks to get connected and support that work that's super timely um, and going on right now. And also lifting up Invest in Youth and the Give and May campaign for My Girls in Action. Um, they're, in here, they're in here in the chat somewhere, but you can hit them up at KGA Long Beach um, and support their awesome work to develop uh, youth le young leaders, um, as specifically from the Khmer and Southeast Asian community. Um, and, and just also appreciating all of the work that they do around gender justice, um, reproductive justice, and so much more, bringing it to that lens of actually changing the community for the better, um, which is better for y'all because of y'all. So just wanna lift that up there. And I appreciate um, Mel coming in to bring us home with some of the parent organizing work that's happening and actually pushing and organizing for education equity in LBUSD. So, Y'all, my heart is full. Um, a lot of work to be done, but I really appreciate folks coming out here for this Amplify Long Beach campaign. You know, this campaign that we're doing is all about, yes, we have a goal. We're organizers. We always have goals, right? So our goal is to raise, you know, $10,000 for um, all of this work that we're doing to build community knowledge, leadership, and power. So if you have the means, um, you know, whether it's $5 or $10 or $25, visit lbforward.org slash amplifylb. There's also a bit.ly link that DMAR is dropping into the chat. I want to encourage you to, to join us and support and help contribute to this vision because as you can see, there's a lot to do, a lot um, for us to continue working towards the, to create a Long Beach where we know things can be better. We know that we can be a community where race and income doesn't determine someone's future or that um, you know we can live in a healthy, safe and connected community. And so much love and appreciation for all the folks who joined us today to share those stories. Um, Gabby, Sam, Melissa, Marlene, um, I, you know, I think this work and our community is better because of the work that y'all are putting into it. So I really appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us. If you were eating uh, while watching this, um, I'm so glad. If you haven't eaten yet, go eat right now. Take care of yourself, drink some water, make sure you're taking care of yourself, go for a walk, enjoy some nature, because um, we got a world to win. So. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Hopefully, if you like this, let us know because we would love to do more lives like this. Um, and let us know what you'd like to see and what you'd like to chop it up with. So check out lb4.org slash amplifylb. Contribute if you can and join us in this effort. We're going until the 31st. Um, and I appreciate you all and love you all so much. I'll see you out in the streets. <laughs>